Discussion keeps the world turning. This is Roundtable. Green rows ahead. Do you know China just wrapped up the Global Sustainable Transport Forum in Beijing? Let's dive into the highlights and see what China and the world have in store for greener, more efficient travel. And from little bursts of joy to unforgettable tunes, we're here to share the happiness that brighten our week. Join us in Roundtable's Happy Place, coming to you live from Beijing. This is Roundtable. I'm He Young. For today's program, I'm joined by Steve Hatherly and Yushun in the studio. First on today's show... Beijing just hosted the Global Sustainable Transport Forum 2024 from September the 25th to 26th, with newly released reports, big plans, and game-changing ideas on the table. The event brought global leaders together to tackle the future of eco-friendly transportation. But what does sustainable transport actually mean, and how does that impact our everyday lives? So. You shouldn't. Mm. Your chance to take up explainer duty today. Okay, so according <laughs> that to looks good on a business card. <laughs> official explainer <laughs> of some official terms. Okay, <laughs> according to International Institute of、uh, for Sustainable Development, which is a UN's advisory group. So sustainable transport、uh, refers to services and infrastructure that advance social and economic development in a safe. Affordable and environmentally friendly manner, reducing carbon and other emissions. So, to offer some more down-to-earth examples, public transportation such as electric buses and trains that can carry people far more efficiently than cars and other healthier methods like cycling and walking are all、mm. included. And One thing、um, I think I would like to introduce is called BRT, Bus Rapid Transit. It is also included in the you know sustainable transportation, and、um, it is kind of a, a public transportation system. I think quite localized in China. It, I've seen it in many cities with smaller populations. You know, building a subway might be a bit too. Costly for them, so this kind of above-ground transport system, which operates similarly to a subway, is very suitable. It has dedicated lanes, so it won't be obstructed by other vehicles、mm. or traffic lights, making it highly efficient. Yeah, sometimes the bus you'll see a city where the bus lanes are in the middle. Um, in the past, you'd see a bus pull over to the side of the road、mm. a lot of the time, and that would really hinder traffic because it would cut off the cars、uh, on its way to the sidewalk area. Sometimes cities now will have the bus lanes, dedicated bus lanes through the middle,、mm. and it really helps to alleviate traffic congestion. Mm. Mm. And we have both here in Beijing.、Mm-hmm. So in the inner, let's say, fifth ring road of the city, which is. A rather large area, actually, but a lot of the old city structure is there, and that's where all the traditional buses, traditional bus lanes,、uh, take place. And also, just a quick reminder: actually, during weekends now, some of these bus lanes are open、mm. to private cars. As well, and that's sort of like a new development of things. But also, please check because not all yeah. lanes are open. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. very important to know where and where you can't bring your car.、Um, the electric buses in Beijing are、mm. awesome. I like watching them take off. Why? From picking up、yeah. their passengers <laughs> because they're so quiet. Remember、oh. those old diesel buses when they、oh. go, you know, and there are manual transmissions,、yeah. rrr, rrr, but the electric ones are like. Mm. And then、oh. they're gone. Oh, interesting!、They're、I never knew so that. So quiet, but the vehicles are huge. These are these huge、mm. buses, but they're still so quiet. That's kind of becoming a, a signal or a signature sound of、uh, new energy cars or buses because they always have that kind of sounds. Some people call them actually、uh, sound like ghosts、mm. because they're <laughs> woom and then go away. Vehicle ghosts. Whenever、yeah. you hear that sound, you'll know there is a new energy car is coming.、Absolutely. Right, and in Chinese cities、uh, for public. Transportation now mostly is green. We're talking about taxis, the buses, including the BRT systems that、uh, you shouldn't just mentioned in Beijing.、Um, yeah, but that's usually like in the slightly outer side.、Uh, Areas of the city center because、mm-hmm. these are massive buses, and then they go so quickly.、Yeah. They、mm-hmm. can pack in at least half. 
fifty um, percent more uh, passengers. They, they, They're huge. They look like double buses yes. sometimes, right? They're, yeah. They look like an accordion, if you know what that musical <laughs> instrument is. Okay. They're connected oh, yeah. uh, by that uh, rubber-looking thing in the middle. Oh, what is it called in Chinese? Can't think of it. Uh, it's not called. Shou feng Shou feng Shou feng Shou feng <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Anyway, sustainable yeah. transport really important topic, isn't it? And mm. it's it's really important to society. It's a crucial driver of economic and social development. Uh, transport infrastructure. It connects people to their work, education, healthcare, mm. all of the mm. different lines of work out there. Um, it's a really important thing. It enables global trade. You look at rural roads, for example, and they can help prevent um, deaths, maternal deaths, through timely access to medical care, boost girls' enrollment in school, increase and diversify farmers' income by connecting them to markets. Mm. There's a million examples that we could give, and those are just a couple. Yes, and this is actually key to, I suppose, the Chinese understanding of development. That is, you need to build the road before any other economic development uh, can actually happen. Mm. I guess a lot of uh, people believe that, and therefore, um, to bring up the economic condition of, let's say, a remote area or a place that really needs some um, extra clash, uh, cash flowing into that area, then um, sometimes it's done privately and a lot of the times it's with public funding. And then mm. you build the road so that you can connect um, the people um, to the outside world and facilitate more economic activity. And also we're seeing that transportation infrastructure has a real big impact on ecosystems. And mm. this is, I guess, now a more up-to-date look at how to further develop transport systems in 2024. Yeah, but at least uh, we can see that um, the transportation sector is a major contributor to global carbon emissions. You know, that's actually accounting for around 23% of energy-related carbon dioxide emissions. And, you know, shifting to a more sustainable uh, transport can actually help reduce this kind of environmental footprint, improving air quality and reducing pollution. And when we are talking about these, you know, we've always said that, you know, protecting the environment is protecting ourselves. And there is a reason for that, because when we are, you know, Basically, when we're saying damaging the environment, we're damaging the environment that we are living in. So, you know, the public health may also relate to it when we are affecting uh, the environment by using too much of these, uh, by, I mean, emitting these mm. Uh, Thanks. The health of the people, also the number, just the sheer number of people. When the UN Conference on Human Environment, the Stockholm Conference, uh, convened way, way back in 1972, the world's population was about 3.8 billion at the time. Today, a lot more. It's more than doubled. It's about, what is it now? Over 8 billion, right? Somewhere mm -hmm. in that area. And they project it to be 9.9 .9 billion by the year 2050. Now, that's important because currently more than 55% of the world's population lives in urban areas and urbanization and an increase in the population around the world that could add another 2.5 billion people to urban areas by that year 2050 uh, with close to 90 percent of this increase coming in areas of asia and africa mm -hmm. now if we think about that if there's going to be a lot more people, then that means, and, and those people are living in urban areas, then between the years, maybe early 2000s up to 2050, vehicle numbers will increase three or fourfold, and that will happen particularly in developed countries or developing countries. So the importance of having the infrastructure there for those people to be mobile, that's crucial, but also we need to keep our planet cr uh, clean, mm -hmm. which is why, you know, sustainable transport is such an important topic. Oh, that's such a good point. And did you know that transportation is apparently responsible for around a quarter of global CO2 emissions, and 72% of which come from cars and other road vehicles? And uh, from 1970 to 2010, these vehicles were responsible for 80% of the increase in emissions. And this is according to a 2021 IICD report. And so on the one hand, we see that travel and transportation actually emits a huge amount of CO2. And on the other hand, with the growing population, and a lot of people actually lack convenient access. And then there's just plenty of room for things to be done to how to 
on the one hand, close that gap a little bit, and on the other hand, talk about how to, without polluting the environment a lot further more,、mm. in doing so. Uh, data from 2019. They looked at 610 different cities in 95 different countries around the world, and they found that only half the world's urban population has convenient, what they called convenient access to public transportation. Well, that's good, I guess, if you look at it from one side of a coin. But if you flip that coin over, that means half of the world's urban population does not have convenient access to public transportation. That's from the 2020 UN Sustainable Development Goals report.、Um, so that proves your point: is、mm. that yeah, things have been done, but there's plenty more、mm. to be done, and that's why forums like this are such an important thing.、Mm. And also, I think、um, you know, with the infrastructure is building, it is actually. Actually, making our lives more convenient is not only about public transportation that you can use、uh, within the cities. It's also connecting people from different cities, even different countries. You know, we see according to China Daily, as of the end of 2023, China's high-speed rail network and freeway system were extended to 45,000 kilometers and 184,000 kilometers, respectively. And also, China has. 38 airports with annual passenger throughput exceeding 10 million, and these、uh, public transportations, I think, it is、um, doing something that you you guys just mentioned that making people connected and、uh, making them to be accessible to、uh, to all of these public transportations. That's a fun fact. 38 airports in China. I did not know that before. I'm going to use that on my friends next、mm-hmm. time when <laughs> China quiz questions come up.、Um, according to the five-year plan, 21,、uh, 2021 to 2025, China's 14th five-year plan.、Um, the aim is for high-speed rail. You mentioned high-speed、mm. rail or or rail here in the country, Yushin.、Um, the aim is to have lines to connect f-、uh, 95% of all cities with at least 500,000 inhabitants by 2025, with a total of 50,000 kilometers of high-speed lines. Operational as part of a total、uh, national rail network of 165,000 kilometers,、mm. and that's a big thing because、uh, Huyang, you talked about the importance of、um, infrastructure having a simple road connecting one community to another community. It can help out、um, the economic status of both communities. Well, take that to a much larger scale. And you're thinking city to city, a city in the northern part of China, like us here in Beijing, to a city in the south. High-speed rail、um, makes things a lot more efficient for passengers, but it makes things a lot more efficient in terms of the economy as well.、Mm. Yes, and China certainly has、uh, placed sustainable. Um, travel and transport high on its agenda,、uh, committing ex- extensive resources to it, and we've seen with the fast development of electric vehicles, and also, essentially, we're talking about electric battery、uh, development as well. And、um, this is one area of fast growth in China, and it promises the Chinese people a greener future. Yeah, and China's being recognized、um, internationally as well. Kim Young Tae is the Secretary General of the International Transport Forum. <clears throat> Pardon me, and and、uh, Mr. Kim noted. Uh, that the country, the growing presence of electric vehicles here in China, is impressive, and and it's indicating a significant shift away from fossil fuel cars. And I think that we even see that on the streets, don't we? Whenever I look at the cars that are driving around, not all of them, of course, but a large number of them, it seems, are electric vehicles. Uh, which is a good sign. That's just my own eye test、mm. walking around the streets. And also,、uh, if if we are speaking of this,、um, you know, I think the development of the sustainable transportation is also a sign of the country is putting more emphasis on, you know, providing citizens a convenient and、um, a life that they that they can get just so easily. You know, I think it's a huge signal and reflection of. City urbanization when you and when we have these kind of facilities, you know, my example may seem a bit childish, but I think, you know,、um, I, I was thinking about the opening scene in Zootopia. You know, do you remember? <laughs> It uses a train running through 
the entire city,、mm. along with various innovative transportation modes, to showcase the city's modernity and sophistication.、Mm. So, because the sustainable public transportation connects,、uh, you know, the development of many other areas and industries. So, citizens work. And even life are highly relying on public transportation. I love how、reflecting. I love how that was such an official statement from Yushin, <laughs> but it referenced a Pixar. I think it was Pixar. Uh, Did, Zootopia、Disney. was it Disney?、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would, for my next point, I would like to reference Zootopia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't see that coming. Try my best, though. Yeah, no, yeah. very good, very good.、Uh, more electric cars, more electric vehicles,、mm-hmm. more electric transportation、uh, is a good thing, according to the International Energy Agency. Let's call it the IEA.、Um, electric mo-、uh, electric micro mobility options they're expanding rapidly as well. We're talking about things like electric scooters. We talked about that on a previous episode. Of、uh, roundtable, I believe. Also, electric assist bicycles, electric mopeds. They were available in over 600 cities across more than 50 countries as of 2021, and an estimated 350 million electric、uh, two or three wheelers, the majority of which were in China, by the way,、mm-hmm. made up about 25 percent of those in circulation、uh, worldwide.、Mm-hmm. And looking into a greener future. Uh, lots of measures are already in the pipeline,、mm. and、um, we can possibly spotlight on a few Chinese cities and just see what they're doing or what they've done in this area. Yeah, and one example that I can think of is the one that I saw that you know it, a lot of cities are developing a system of you know green、uh, road freight system so that they can actually. Build up a platform for drivers to connect with each other and improve the efficiency of using their trucks. So, you know, because we know that road freight is a core battleground for carbon reduction in China's,、uh, you know, transportation sector. You know, within the transportation sector, road traffic contributes、uh, over eighty percent of carbon emissions, and road freight accounts for more than sixty percent. Road freight, you're、yes. referring to larger delivery trucks, right?、Mm-hmm. And、um, For all of these road traffic emissions, and you know, technology can be a very important part in this sector. And this digital freight platform called、uh, Manbang it utilizes big data and algorithms to enhance matching efficiency to and improve vehicle capacity utilization. Because I think、uh, you know the load factor of large trucks is closely related to transportation efficiency and energy conservation. If you are driving an empty truck, then that's absolutely a huge waste. Yes, because those trucks, when we think about freight transport, we think about oh, okay, they're carrying cargo from point A to point B.、Mm. Well, what can we do about that? But those trucks often make empty trips too、yes. to the places where they have to pick up、mm. that cargo. Yeah, it's a big problem.、Um, You asked for some examples about、uh, cities. Let's go to Shanghai for a moment. Shanghai focuses on、uh, things like smart taxis and smart logistics and smart public transportation. Smart, smart, smart <laughs> in the city of Shanghai.、Um, they're encouraging traditional taxi companies to participate in innovation. They're also asking them to accelerate the creation of an intelligent travel service ecosystem. They've opened a total of 1,003 test roads with a total mileage exceeding 2,000 kilometers. 32 enterprises, 794 vehicles in Shanghai have obtained licenses of road testing,、um, and this is demonstrating、uh, application operation.、Mm-hmm. They've got a cumulative test mileage of about 22.9 million kilometers, which means all those numbers mean、uh, that they're trying their best to make the taxis. Taxis are always on the road.、Mm-hmm. Taxis are always contributing to traffic as well, but they're trying to make them as smart as they can. Yes, and that involves a lot of Data collection, data mining, and data sharing, I suppose.、Mm. And with the logistics examples that you guys were talking about, about the、uh, freight trucks and stuff, and well, certainly that's been a point of contention in this country for some、uh, a few、um, months ago, I suppose. And most people, I mean. I don't think we need to worry too much for the fact that drivers, because they don't want to lose money running around、mm. with a, driving around an empty truck,、mm-hmm. so they'll find ways to fill that truck. But what's really important here is to find safe ways to secure、um, the safety of the 
the driver, as well as the stuff that that person is carrying, as well as、um, with all this data that's being presented. It's really useful to maybe in a faster and more efficient way to find the right cargo for those round trips to be filled, and、um, hopefully that will you know make lives a little bit easier for the truck drivers as well as make the whole process streamlined and more efficient and possibly greener if we can employ more of the green energy into. All cars and f- f-、uh, freight on、mm. the road. They could look to Switzerland as an example. I thought this is a really interesting story. In Switzerland, it's a very, very ambitious、uh, proposal, but it could see the construction of an expansive underground network through which self-driving pods would transport freight across、mm. the country. It's a really, really Really cool idea that would be amazing for the planet. It's called cargo souterrain, which means underground cargo in English, and it's intended to reduce the reliance on trucks for moving cargo.、Um, trucks, yeah. To mention it again, the demand for freight transportation is growing around the world, but there's also a shortage of truck drivers worldwide as well. Then you've got high fuel prices, and that's made road transportation more expensive. And transporting freight by road accounts for about six percent of global carbon dioxide emissions. So, with this project, they're hoping they will reduce heavy traffic from Swiss roads by up to forty percent because it will only be using renewable energy, and it will emit eighty percent less carbon dioxide per ton of cargo than transporting freight by road today. The goal is zero emission.、Mm-hmm. Um, they're having some bumps. I just checked before our chat today to see how the project was going because that information was from CNN that I just gave you from 2023.、Um, they're still trying to figure out some some of the finer details, like where the hubs will be. Some of them are planned to be in residential na- neighborhoods, so they're still squabbling about that a little bit. But that's such a unique idea, isn't it? Put the freight underground with these pods. That don't take any energy, totally renewable energy sources, and the traffic, the reduction,、mm. the fossil fuel gasoline reduction,、uh, really, really good for the planet.、Mm. So, is it like underground? underground? You still need to dig these tunnels out, right? Absolutely, yeah. So,、oh. if they build it, the network is going to stretch about 500 kilometers from Geneva. In the west of Switzerland, to an area called Saint Gallen in the northeast, they're hoping it can be completed by 2020,、uh, 2045. The goal for the first 70 kilometer section is 2032. But like I said, they're they're、um, they're fighting a little bit about hub locations right、mm. now. But it's not like they've canceled the project. They're still planning on going forward with it. Yeah. Speaking of you know transporting cargoes and goods, I think. Um, when we're talking about these,、um, uh, having a sustainable transportation system,、um, connecting one country to another is also need to be included. So we saw China has、uh, fostered global cooperation in sustainable transportation by means such as signing multiple bilateral agreements on international road and air transportation, as well as building L-、uh, railways abroad. When I was, you know, on a business trip to Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, I saw the China Europe Railway Express, which connects many neighboring countries, these trains carry goods from various countries, facilitating, I think, a very smooth trade between different regions. And I believe this not only promotes the infrastructure development of you know these various areas, but also strengthens the friendship between countries while、uh, you know mutually boosting economic growth.、Mm, I, I definitely. Enjoy that idea, and I think it's really important to、um, have these kind of connections with、um, the countries around us. And also, what do you see as ways to promote sustainable transport to benefit the people here as well as benefit the world?、Hmm. I think we can look to Abdul Alim Khan for an answer here, the Federal Minister of Pakistan's Communications, Privatization, and Board of Investment.、Uh, Mr. Khan emphasized the need for improved connectivity between urban and rural areas, particularly in developing countries like in Pakistan, for example, where they have an inadequate rural road system, and that hinders economic development and it exacerbates inequality. So, yeah, that would be a perfect example:、um, improved connectivity between urban and Not just rural to rural, but rural to urban areas too. 
Yeah, and that's definitely where a lot of the future possibilities and opportunities could happen. You know, f- from the、uh, rural、uh, areas to urban,、uh, and vice versa, where more connectivity could happen. And the journey towards sustainable transport is just the beginning. And the innovations, and let's say measures today that we talked about, are testament to what's achievable when nations unite for a common cause. And as China invests more into green technologies and future, the road ahead seems there are more options and a little bit more promising.